our academy. It's a uh, pleasure today to uh, give you a talk on uh, this hot topic, spine influenza, which has been really uh, hotly discussed in the media for the past month or so. And I figure it's timely to give you just an overview, an overview about this infection and the reasons for panic or concern. I'll have really to cover influenza viruses in general to be able to understand for you to be able for you to understand what swine influenza and how it is different from the usual influenza viruses. So I'll give you an overview, overview about human influenza and avian influenza and then uh, swine influenza or the pig uh, influenza. So I'll give you a historical background, the exotics in pigs transmission to humans, the mode of transmission, um, clinical features of the human disease, and treatment and prevention. <clears throat> As you may know, influenza viruses belong to the orthopedic survival group of students, and these viruses contain RNA. Okay? And the influenza virus in particular has eight RNA segments that mutate or recombine to produce a new viral strain. And this gives you the types, either A, B, or C. And then we have a lipid mem membrane that contains the hemagglutinin, which is known as H antigen, and the neuraminidase, which is known as the N antigen. These are on the surface of the virus, as I'll show you shortly. And you can classify the influenza A viruses based on this H and N type to substrains. So we have three main influenza viruses, the A, B, and C. The B and C affect only humans, whereas A can involve humans, known as seasonal influenza, and can affect uh, birds, known as avian influenza, and can affect pigs, and this is known as swine influenza. And may, it may also affect seals, horses, and other animals. <coughs> this is the structure of the virus. As I said, this is the RNA of the virus, but on the su superficial aspect of the virus, you can see two antigens, the hemagglutinin, which is known as the H antigen, and we have 16 types, from 1 to 16 types of the H. And you also have the N antigen, and we have 9 N types, from 1, one to 9. Each virus, each virus has to have either, has to have 1 H and 1 N. You cannot have more than 1 N, and you cannot have more than 1 H. So viruses are typically classified as either A, B, or C. And as I said, the A is further, further classified into uh, different strains according to the H and N pattern. If you read the vaccine that you receive for the, for the influenza, you'll find the name written this way. The first letter indicates the type of the virus. This is for the human influenza virus. The first letter indicates the type of influenza, whether it is A, B, or C. As I said, B and C affect only humans. So you can have a component of the vaccine strains of the B type or the C type. So the first letter indicates the strain type, and then the geographic location of the virus where it has been originally described or emerged, and then the strain number, and then the year of isolation. And then they put the H and the N type. So this is what you have uh, in the vaccination uh, pamphlet, just for you to understand what it means. Now, as I said, we have 16 H types. Three of them only affect humans. H1, H2, and H3. Two of them only affect swines or pigs, H1 and H3. But the H1 of the pig is different from H1 of the uh, humans. Even though they are both H1, 
but they are distinctly different. All edge types from 1 to 16 All 16 types affect birds, and this is known as avian flu. Actually, the reservoir of the influenza virus is the what? The, the, the birds, particularly the migratory birds or the wild birds that travel overseas. These are actually the carriers of the influenza virus, so they can be infected with any of the 16 edge types. Rarely, horses can get affected with H3 and H7. Sears, Kilab al can also get affected with H4 and H7, etc. Right. Whereas with N, you have two, uh, three Ns that affect humans. The N1, N2, and N8. In this one, you have N1 and N2. And in birds, you can have any N. The migratory birds, as I said, are the main reservoirs of the, of the virus, and it can be any of the H types and can have any of the N types. This diagram is important to show you that the migratory bird is the source of influenza for all animals, pigs, horses, seers, wheels, whales, and domestic birds, deek, dujaj, yukabumi, and hamad, are domestic birds, can actually get infected with flus from the migratory birds. But then humans can also get influenza from the birds, and this is known as avian flu, and can get also infections from pigs, and this is known as swine flu. And notice that the pig also can get infected from the human being. The pig can have influenza virus of the human type. And this, this is important when we talk about reassortment or swapping of, of genes later on. Let us now just give you a brief description of the seasonal, the seasonal or human influenza, known as human influenza, influenza radii, the gene of The usual influenza causes epidemic every year. This is expected and it happens every year. The human influenza causes epidemics every year. If we take the United States of America, 10 to 20 percent of the population get influenza every year by the usual influenza strain. 114,000 people in the states require admission to hospitals to be treated for influenza complications. And 36,000 patients die of influenza in the United States and they spend $10 billion a year to treat the complications of influenza and to diagnose it. So it's, it's really a big problem anyway. The, the season or the reusual influenza is actually a big problem that we see every year. Yeah. Most of the mortalities that we see, either in the States or in other countries, affect elderly people, people with chronic debilitating diseases, COPD, heart failure, liver disease, renal failure, immunosuppression such as HIV infected patients or chemotherapy patients. So those who die are usually either the elderly or the immunocompromised patients. If we look at the global level, three to five million people every year throughout the world get infected with severe influenza, human influenza. I'm not talking yet about swine. This is the human influenza. Three to five million people get infected with, the, uh, with this influenza, human influenza with severe illness. And up to half a million, 500,000 people die worldwide every year due to the influenza, human influenza virus. 